Regardless if you hate or admire this family, they certainly understand a thing or two about money. And if you look back at their history, it's clear that they have made some great investments besides starting the first ever international bank. Back in the day when most people didn't understand much about the stock market, this family, particularly Nathan, had a clear idea on how to manipulate the market and cash out at the right time. In fact, his strategies were pretty similar to Warren Buffett's one, and if you give it a closer look, you will realize that they have followed similar steps to create such a fortune. The stock market isn't the most rational game. Stock prices do not change based on the performance of the companies, but rather on people's perception about their future earnings. If people believe that a certain commodity will be more valuable in the future, that's where they will bet their money on, and the demand will naturally increase the price, and vice versa. Nathan Rothschild understood that perfectly and committed one of the most audacious moves in the financial history and made an incredible fortune. But to understand his strategy, we have to go back and take a look at the history. After the French Revolution, Europe was in chaos. Other monarchies were afraid that they might end up like Leo XVI. During this instability, Napoleon rose to power and strengthened his grip. This instability brought uncertainty and whoever predicted the outcome of these wars correctly have made the right bet on the stock market and ended up with a great fortune. Because one way governments would raise money to fight a war was through bonds. If England for example would win the war, the price of British bonds would increase, and if they lose, the opposite would happen. When Napoleon was defeated and sent to exile, people thought that's the end of Napoleonic wars. However, Napoleon escaped in 1815 and took over France again. It was his final chance to take over Europe. If he would defeat the British army, he had all the chances to fulfill his dream. Which means, the British government wouldn't be able to pay back its debt and that would make British bonds less valuable and prices would decrease significantly. It was a difficult bet because everyone knew how smart Napoleon was. At the end of the day, he is one of the greatest generals in history. The Battle of Waterloo was going to be the decisive factor behind the future of Europe, and Nathan wouldn't let this go without taking advantage of it. Nathan believed that Napoleon would defeat the British army, which means that there will be another series of Napoleonic wars, and the British government will need a huge loan to finance it. So Nathan began buying gold aggressively, so that later he would loan them to British government at an extremely high rate, and they will have no choice but to accept it. However, things went to an absolutely different direction. Napoleon lost the battle, but Nathan made sure that he will receive the news before the government does, and he made all the arrangements for that to happen. In fact, he received the news a full day before the government's official messenger arrived. He understood that as soon as the government announces victory, British bonds will skyrocket, because this victory will make the Britain the most powerful nation in the world, and everyone will be willing to buy its bonds. So he started spreading rumors that Britain lost the battle, and some people were afraid to lose their investments and rush to the market to sell their bonds. Even without the rumors, no one really knew the outcome of the war. So it was logical to sell your bonds before they lose half of their value the next day, when the news of defeat will reach the market. On the other side, Nathan began buying British bonds heavily. And on the next day when the government officially announced victory, British bonds dramatically rose. But Nathan didn't sell his bonds. He understood that since Napoleon is defeated, there will be a period of peace and stability, which will further increase bonds prices. And after two years when prices reached their peak, Nathan cashed out and made an incredible fortune. One of the things he said was, buy when the cannons are firing and sell when the trumpets are blowing. Which means, when there is chaos and crisis, when everyone is afraid to invest, that's when you should jump in and invest. And when there is prosperity and everyone is investing, you should sell. Warren Buffett said something similar, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful, which pretty much means the exact same thing that Nathan said. There are multiple other examples of great investments which we'll cover in future videos, so make sure you're subscribed and turn on your notifications. 
Give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.